If you're getting cause errors inside of your application that you're developing on your local host, I'm going to show you how Morales can solve that by using cloud functions. So I'll give you an example. I've got a URL here for some metadata for an NFT, and we can actually visit that URL and it will give us this object. And the typical naming convention is in here. So we've got the name, the description, the image, and the attributes of this particular NFT. But what we want to do is we want to be able to fetch that information and display it on our application. But when we try and do that, whether it's in the console or in the app itself, we're getting an issue like this. Uh, access to fetch has been blocked by cause policy. No access control, allow origin header or so on. Whatever the error might be, it's going to be based on cause. And that could also come as a result of searching from within the application, whatever function you might have gives you the same issues. But what we want is to be able to search for that and retrieve the information and put that directly into our application because we want that object to be returned just like this. And this is an example of how Morales is able to do that. And I'm going to show you how to write that in your application right now. To follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need to get a service set up on Morales.io. Sign up, log in, go to the admin panel under servers, create a new server, and then choose all of the details that you need to spin that up. Mainnet server is fine. Pick all of the chains and then add the instance. Once you've got that, you're going to need to view the details, get your application ID and your server URL so we can initialize and connect to the server and use the Morales functions. OK, also another thing to be aware of is that this is a very basic HTML only page. There's no styling or CSS in here. There is some JavaScript, which I'll talk you through, but it's just showing you the functionality and it's not showing you how you can make a website look. I'll leave that to you guys as designers and developers to make something much, much better looking. The editor that I'm going to be using is Visual Studio Code. I have a couple of extensions installed. Uh, for example, Live Server, Solidity extension, an ES7 snippets extension, and the Morales snippets extension. I'm going to create a home.html file, and we'll need to go over to the Morales documentation and get the basic boilerplate code, uh, Morales.io documentation. Scroll down to the build a simple dApp in three minutes and choose the HTML code in here. Copy and paste it into your editor and then we can start to hollow that out. So let's go back to the application just for reference to see what HTML we need. So we've got a title, a search bar, two buttons, some text, horizontal rule and some extra content divs down here. So I'll go and copy the HTML from my uh, clipboard and I'll just paste it in here uh, so we can work with that. There we are. And so what we have is a H1 tag saying search metadata. We have an input, which is a text input, uh, size 50. And uh, we have two buttons with two on click functions, one called get metadata and one called cloud meta. And they are named regular and cloud. We have a P tag, which just has our reference URL that we're going to use. Horizontal rule, the H2 tag that says content, two empty divs, which we can use to inject code into and then a link to our main.js, which we've not yet created. There we go. And inside our main.js file, um, we can start to build out the code. Uh, we better just make sure, however, that we have connected our Morales server. So you'll need to go and spin up your server and add the application ID and the Morales server. All of our previous, uh, or most of our previous tutorial videos will show you how to do that. So I'm assuming you're familiar with that now. So I'll just save one that I've spun up for this example down here and let's just see how that one looks now if we just run that in a live server okay so we have this we'll just load this and here we go we are ready to start building out our logic now in our main JS we need to build the first function which would be this get metadata this is going to be our traditional if you like vanilla fetch function which we know is going to fail because we tried it in the example at the beginning of the video but it would look something maybe like this. You would uh, declare a variable called URL. You would go and get um, an element by its ID and go and get its value. And that will be whatever the URL input will be in that search. Uh, for some reason, my snippets keeps changing that to a different 
different command, which I don't want. Uh, so we want to get the input uh, BTN search ID in there. Okay. Once we've assigned that variable, we can then just go and do our regular fetch, which we had in our previous one, actually. We can probably just copy this uh, because it would be that. And that would be, we'll just put that into a variable called metadata. And it, we can probably await that. There we go. So let metadata uh, await a fetch of this particular URL. The only difference would be that it's not that anymore. It's actually going to be the URL that we've started here. And we can just tidy that up. And that would be the beginnings of our um, of, of our code. Okay, so once we've got that back, we can just console log it, and that's typically how we would produce something like that. And when we go and start that back up again, let's go and see if it works in our browser. We know that it's probably not going to. See if we get any problems come back. Huh. Okay, uh, we've made an error somewhere. Um, let's just go and see what that is. So we are in the logic. We are doing document.get and BT, btn search. Okay, let's just see if that's the right one. It's not the value of the button. It's the value of the input that we needed. So we will change that. Easy mistake. And just pay attention while you're coding. And then if we do a search, there we go. So that is giving us the error that we are going to be faced with. So that's typically my, how we might build the, our applications and, and how it might feature. Now we need to do something just a little bit different because we're going to need to put this inside a cloud function in some way and do a HTTP request inside Morales's server. So let's hop over to our server and go and write that out. We'll go and pull up the documentation as well just so we can see the reference of how we would do this. Uh, because we need to go to the cloud code and start reading through the cloud functions. We're going to define a cloud function and we're also then going to call a cloud function as well. So um, feel free to spend a bit of time having to look through both of these two pages because we're going to be utilizing some of the techniques from there. Okay, now in our Morales dashboard, if we go to the server that we want to use, and we now need to open up cloud functions. And this is where we're going to start writing out uh, what we need to see. And from my clipboard, I will paste the function that we're going to be using, which is this. OK, so morales.cloud.define. We're going to define a function called fetchjson, which is an asynchronous function that will return the morales.cloud.http request, of which inside that there is an object with the method is going to get and then a URL which is what we're going to pass it because this request allows us to assign some parameters and we're going to give it a parameter called the URL so when we actually call this function we're going to pass it what it is that we need to do and then once it has this it can simply return to us the uh, HTTP request and that is how we're going to bypass cause so we can save this now and head back over to our code and start writing our second function, which we will call uh, cloud meta. I mean, call it whatever you like, but uh, that's what we'll call it. And that one is an asynchronous function. And inside there, we will do exactly the same thing here. So we will steal that. And we will also then need to, let's think about this, we need to declare our parameters. So back in our cloud functions, we said that there was a parameter that it was going to be expecting, uh, this one here. So if I just copy that for the moment in here, I'll delete that in a moment, but it's just so we have it there for reference. So let's create a, a variable called params, and it's an object. And inside that, we will give it the param that it's expecting, which is this one. And we'll give that as the URL, uh, which will be this, which is going to be whatever we type inside of our search function. So that's where it will put that. And that's what the parameter is called, the URL, which we will send off to our next line of code, which is how we will call 
our cloud function and again that's in the documentation I showed the page for that one for you so uh, as a challenge why don't you go and see if you can write that to command out and get this working and then come back and see if you get the same solution because the solution will be to await the morales.cloud.run and inside that we tell the function we want to run and we give it excuse me and we give it the params which is this here okay great so that is that and then we can console log the response or whatever we get back and hopefully we do get something back if we do get something back we can then start building out our uh, HTML and put that into our application let's just remove this cloud function it might just uh, confuse things and just do a quick check and I think that looks okay so we'll save that go back to our application and we'll refresh just to be safe clear this console copy and paste that in we should get an error on this one and then we should get this one working we do excellent so there we go we've got a response back and inside there we can start using this information here we've got the data in there so we've got our name our image our description and our attributes for this particular nft so now we've got that back we can put that into our content and to do that let's just do something very very simple so i'm going to copy this off of my clipboard here which is to declare a variable called content of which i'm going to open up a template literal with a couple of p tags and an image tag and inside the first p tag i'm going to go into that metadata object into its data because we know that uh, metadata is the object dot data is here dot name or metadata dot data dot description or metadata dot data dot image they're the ones that we need so that's what i've used in here i've given the image a width of 50 and a height of 50 and that will be that so we now need to find a way of using this so we need to go and declare or, or create a relationship um let's call it the content and we need to go to document dot get element by id and we need to go to our html and find what we call that blank div now this one here so browser fetch go into there into browser fetch so that is the content and so now what we need to do in our function is use that by saying that the content is in a html should be whatever is in here which will be this which comes back from our object if we save that with a bit of luck that will work no errors so far so let's check it by searching for it and see what comes back ah great so the content itself then says doggy in the house doggy in the house twice but that's only because the name and the description are the same we also have the image which has come back as a 50 by 50 square and uh altogether that just shows you that by just doing a regular fetch in localhost you're going to be getting a cause error but if you use morales with the cloud functions you can bypass that and actually still get the content into your application guys i hope that was really useful uh, as frustrating as those cause errors are i hope this is the solution for you and um, be really great to see what it is that you're building with morales and we look forward to catching up with you again in the next video